Hey guys, Pastor Jeremy here again with another devotional. I was reading this week a story about a man who was out and he was pushing his daughter on a swing. And uh, as he was pushing her, he was doing these great big push with these pushes that we call underdogs, where you, you push your kids so hard that you're going right under their swing and you're creating this huge motion. And, and as he was doing this, uh, he noticed another little girl come to the swing beside them and call for her dad to push her on the swing. So her dad slowly started walking to the swing. You could see though, as he was walking there, that was taking a lot of effort for him to get there. And so finally he gets there and he starts pushing his daughter on the swing, but you can tell it's causing him physical pain. Now, I don't know what it is that this man was struggling with, but he had some kind of sickness where movement and physical exertion were painful for him. And so this man who wrote this was talking about how he had this desire in him to fix this man. He saw this man and he saw that this man wanted to push his daughter on the swing in the same way that he was, but he couldn't because he was sick, because his body was breaking down. And this man talked about the feeling of powerlessness that came over him as he realized that there was nothing he could do to help the situation. He had no power in himself to help this man. He couldn't push the daughter for him. The daughter wanted her dad to push her. And yet this man struggled with the sickness that no human was able to overcome and no human was able to heal. Now that sense of powerlessness might be something that a lot of us are feeling right now. We're, we're looking at the world around us. We're looking at the sickness. We're looking at people struggling. And we have this sense of powerlessness, the sense that we are not in control of anything that's happening right now. And that's true. We have no ability within ourselves to heal people sick with coronavirus. We have no power within ourselves to change the government's response to these things. We have no power within ourselves to cause this pandemic to come to a close. We are powerless. Uh, but I wanted to point our attention today to the one who is not powerless. And to, to do that, I'm going to get us to read Matthew chapter 8. And we're going to look at verses 23 to 27 together. This is a very well-known story uh, to most of us, but I don't want the familiarity to the story to cause us to check out uh, on the importance of what is happening here. This is an important story, and it's the story of Jesus calming the storm. So let's read that from Matthew chapter 8, and it's verses 23 to 27. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose, and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? So we think about the situation that the disciples are in right now. Their lives were in danger. Not only was there this great storm that their boat was in, but their boat, it says, was being swamped by the waves. Now, I don't know much about sailing, but I do know that if your boat is being swamped by waves, that's not a good thing. So the disciples, they go, they go to Jesus and they say to him, the words that they say is, we are perishing. We are dying. This is mortal danger. To have your boat sink in this is not like having your boat sink in a small pond. For them to have their boat sink in the middle of the storm would have led to certain death. But Jesus' response is a little bit, of, honestly, of a funny one because he asks them the question, why are you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. Now, if I was one of the disciples, I would have been thinking, what do you mean, why are we afraid? Have you seen the storm out there? Have you seen the waves coming into the boat? Have you seen the fact that our boat is swamped with water right now? Why are we afraid? We're about to die. This storm is going to kill us. That's why we're afraid. But notice that Jesus connects their fear to their lack of faith. Now, I'm going to distinguish between two things. I'm going to say that there's a difference between something that I'm going to call today precautionary concern and fear. We're in the middle of a pandemic here. We're in the middle of, of the sickness uh, inflicting so many people. And it is good for us to take precautionary measures. It's, it's okay for us to have precautionary concern about the situation that we're in. God has given us instincts 
to run away from danger. He has given us instincts to react in a positive way that will keep us safe when danger comes. We should avoid danger. We should try to stay safe during this pandemic and do our best to keep others safe. That's a good thing. But we should not fear. Remember that Jesus connected here with the disciples fear to a lack of faith. Notice what Jesus didn't say. Jesus didn't say, why are you guys afraid? You're great sailors. You guys can handle this storm. This storm is nothing. I've seen you guys out on the sea. You're such good sailors. I know that you can do it. No, uh, that's not what he said. He said, why are you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. Jesus wasn't amazed that they were afraid because they had within themselves the power to overcome the storm. Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. He was amazed at the fact that they didn't have faith even during this great storm which threatened their life. So what this means for us as Christians is we are called and we should be unafraid even in the face of death. Not because we have the power within ourselves to control our present situation. We don't. We can't bring healing to our country. We don't control the virus. But we are unafraid because our faith is in the one who has this present situation firmly in his grasp. He intends this situation for our good who are in Christ. And he intends this situation for his glory. That's where our lack of fear in the middle of storms, in the middle of pandemics, in the middle of trouble comes from. Now, Jesus showed us a number of reasons that we should have faith in his power while he was on earth. First, he showed us that he has the power over sickness. You know, through all throughout Jesus' ministry, he would heal people who came along. He has that power today. He will bring healing to our world when and if he decides to. We can have faith in that. He has power over sickness. The coronavirus isn't too big for him to heal, but he has a purpose in this. And when he judges it's the right time to bring healing to our world, he will bring healing to our world. The second thing that he showed is he has power over creation. Earthquakes and tsunamis and droughts and floods. He is the creator of the earth. You know, for all the healings that the disciples saw, it was his stopping of the waves which caused them to marvel. They said, even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this man? But there was one thing which he had the power over, which he hadn't even shown them yet. They hadn't even seen his power over death. But he does have the power over death as well. We stand unafraid in the face of a pandemic because our faith is in the one who even defeated death. There's nothing beyond his power. There's no broken blade of grass or no shooting star that is beyond his sovereign will. When Christ went to the grave and he rose victorious, he was showing that he had power over every aspect of life and every aspect of death. There is nothing that we will face. There's nothing created that he does not have complete control and complete power over. So yes, take precautionary measures. Have precautionary concern. Be safe. Use wisdom. But stand unafraid today. Not because you have the power over this virus. Not because you have the power over the difficult situations you're facing. Not because you have the power over even your own health. You don't. But be unafraid today because our God does. He has a plan for the pandemic. Even if we never see it. He is in control. He is all powerful. He showed us that power through Christ and he is the same God who calmed the storm at just a word.